This is part one of a two-part review of this combination of products. This thing is called the Cerasel Hive Defender and it can be bought in conjunction with this thing which is called the Beast Blocker. These little tabs flop up and down. I'll talk about that, more about that in a minute. Before I go any further I need to make it clear that this is an unpaid review. I haven't spoken to Cerasel about their products. I've seen this product in other videos, some of my friends are using them on their hives and swear by them, so I thought I'll stick one onto one of my hives and follow it along, make videos to show you how this thing works, if it works, and, what, and let you know an honest review of what I think of it. So obviously because this video is just going to be about what is the product meant to do, and you can watch me put it onto one of my hives, I'm not going to be evaluating it. I'm not going to be assessing it and saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm simply going to be showing you what it is and then in a future video I'll do a review and explain what I think about the product. Make sure you don't miss that review by clicking the subscribe button down below so that when that video gets posted you'll get a notification. So let's start with the Hive Defender. It's a sturdy plastic hive base. It's clearly a vented hive base. It's got ventilation in it. But it's got some tricky things. So the first is this red bit, which is a, if you can see there, as I push that up and down, you can actually close that ventilation off by sliding that across. Now I think that's a great idea. I wonder over time whether or not propolis and dirt and stuff will get in there and make that mechanism hard to move, but we'll find that out. The second part is this bit on the bottom. Let me pull it apart and show you what that is. So it needs a wee bit of assembly when it comes. There are four of these one-way gates. This is a wasp trap. So these just click in here. I haven't done it before, so you'll find out, well, I'll find out how hard that is. Oh, that just snapped into there quite nicely. Interesting, it's come with five. Whether that's an error or whether there's another one goes somewhere else inside the design of the thing, I don't know. I'll figure that out in a minute. Having a spear is a handy thing. If it is a spear. I might need it yet. I know. I've got that one clicked in. Okay, so the idea of this is that in the hives up in its normal orientation, wasps can enter there. Now you might ask the question, what are the likelihood of a wasp finding that entrance and going in there? And the answer is quite high. If you've ever watched wasps as they're uh, having a go at a hive, if it's a strong hive and they can't get in the entranceway, they will look for other gaps and crevices to try and get in, a bit like rubber bees. And the idea of this is that there's going to be the smell of the hive coming out through the vented slats in the bottom, and the wasps will be able to get into that cavity in the bottom, but they won't be able to get out. So, they're just going to dehydrate in there and die. I don't know yet, I, maybe there's a set of instructions and I could find out, but I don't know yet whether this will be more effective if the red slot is closed so that any smell from the hive during the attack of, a, of wasps comes out through this section and therefore there's more attraction coming from this point. 
So that's the Hive Defender and its two key attributes, the opening and shutting gate and the wasp trap. Now I'm going to put a box on top to demonstrate the beast blocker. Again, I've seen this demonstrated by other beekeepers. This sits on the front of the hive here, like so. It comes with a little packet of screws. Now I notice when I look in there that there are two, four, six small screws and one larger screw. And I'm guessing that the larger screw goes through here to hold the middle, top middle in. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six holes on the side. And that will hold that flush on there. Now what exactly is this thing? These little gates open. The way this works is that the bees in the hive come out the entranceway which is behind this guard in here. And to get out of the hive they have to then come up and out this gap at the top and fly away. And when they come back, because they came out that way, they recognize that and they can find their way back in by going down and into the hive. Robber bees and wasps, on the other hand, are attacking a hive based on their sense of smell. If they can, they can smell the smell of the nectar and all the goodies inside the hive, and it's coming out the entrance, down here. So they go towards the smell. They can't figure out that they need to climb up here and over and down into the hive. So therefore this protects the hive against invaders and robbers. You can use it to close down the entrance by shutting one of those down or you can shut the entrance off completely by closing both of them. And it's still vented even though it's closed up which is a good thing. You could use that for moving the hive or for protecting it in a time of extreme attack. So that's enough talking about it in here in the studio. Let's take it outside and chuck it on a hive. I should explain what's going on with this hive as I'm working on it. It looks a bit odd with the fact that all the brood is in the deep box which is way up the top and then there are three three quarters underneath. One of them's got a few bees in it, the other two are empty. Why on earth would I have empty three quarters under the brood? And the answer is that I'm in the process of converting this hive which was a deep, a single deep brood chamber into three three quarter brood chambers so that I've got a supply of three-quarter brood here on hand in my yard. I didn't have enough three-quarter boxes within my whole inventory of hives so I decided to convert a deep over into a three-quarter. So this hive's midway through that process. The queens below the queen excluder laying up a storm down there, making brood down there. The original brood is in the top box and over the next few weeks it, it'll emerge and eventually they'll start putting stores up there and then I'll rearrange the hive yet again and shift the brood that's in, in the three quarter box to the very bottom, put empty three quarter boxes over the top of it and eventually take that deep box completely out of the picture and put it onto a different hive. So you can see that the task of putting the hive defender on the hive is pretty straightforward. You move the boxes out of the way, you replace the existing base with the new base and then you put the rest back on again. Apart from assembling it at the start that we did earlier by popping those little one-way gates into the wasp trap underneath, there's no assembly required. You simply put the base in place and put the hive on top of it. I have left this hive set up with the red gate underneath open because it's the middle of summer and that seems to be the right thing to do to give them as much ventilation as possible.
The next task is to put the best blocker on the front. After a false start where I had the wrong bit on my impact driver, I put it in place, made sure it was centered and screwed those screws in. No big deal. So there it is, there's the entrance of the hive, freshly screwed on, notice that the bees are hovering out the front, they haven't quite figured out yet how to get in and out. We will come back and do a review of these two products in uh, probably a month or maybe even six weeks. Make sure you don't miss that review by clicking the subscribe button down below so that when that video gets posted you'll get a notification. Thanks for watching. <laughs>